In the fall of 1822, Colonel Benjamin Stevenson is believed to have been suffering from malaria. Intermittent fevers, or ague as they were then called, were seasonal and endemic throughout much of the United States, particularly along the great rivers of the country's interior. Living on the western frontier of the United States, in the new state of Illinois, the Stevenson family sent for their neighbor and family friend, Dr. John Todd, to attend to the patriarch of the family. In many rural communities, there were no professional physicians, and illnesses were treated by midwives or with traditional folk remedies. Since there were no hospitals or clinics, doctors visited their patients at their own homes to provide treatment. While ill, Colonel Stevenson remained in his own bed, looked after by his family and servants. Germ theory did not exist, and illnesses were believed to be caused by the body's humors being out of balance, or by miasmas, or foul, stagnant air. Wines, cordials, and other alcoholic cocktails were commonly prescribed for treating fevers. Physicians at this time treated symptoms, not underlying illnesses. The goal of treating seasonal fevers consisted of, quote, cleanse the passages, remove obstructions, and invigorate the stomach. Examinations consisted of noting a patient's color, pulse, general symptoms, and feeling for swelling of the organs. Finally, a physician would examine the smell and color of a patient's urine and stool, as well as, yes, the flavor of a patient's urine. A doctor attending a patient would carry a small variety of implements with him. In this case, Dr. Todd brought with him dried yellow bark, a fleam, a pocketbook for recording notes and treatments, cupping glasses, and a stethoscope. The family had already been purchasing their own yellow bark, purgatives, and cathartic pills to treat the colonel themselves. Purgers such as this did exactly what you think it did. Enemas were a common treatment for a wide variety of ailments. The fleam is a set of small blades that are used for bloodletting. Though bleeding was still a very common treatment for almost all ailments, it was beginning to be seen as slightly old-fashioned by 1822. Cupping was a painful treatment that required placing scalding hot glass cups on the bare skin that would slowly fill with blood and fluids as they cooled and created a vacuum. In an effort to dissipate harmful vapors and encourage sweating, Dr. Todd expects the family to keep the fire roaring and the bedroom very warm. Since he is familiar with the Stevenson household, he may step out to tend to the fire himself. The acute symptoms of malaria would consist of three waves of separate attacks. Colonel Stevenson would first have suffered from muscle ache, shaking, and sweating, and when those had subsided, they would soon be followed by shivering and chills, and finally severe fevers. A physician would have treated each of the acute symptoms separately, keeping a patient as warm as possible and encouraging the sweats, using purgatives, laxatives, and warm drinks to break the chills, and using yellow bark tea to break the fevers. When feverish, cold compresses were used to cool the head while the body was kept wrapped in blankets to keep the core and limbs warm.
dried yellow cinchona bark was ground and brewed into a tea. We now know that this dried bark contains quinine, which is still used as an anti-malarial and as a component in many modern pharmaceuticals. Quinine is one of the few medicines available in 1822 that was actually effective. When making their house calls, doctors would have to provide rudimentary instructions to family and servants to continue treatment once the doctor had left. Medical books of the era provide a variety of purgatives, such as calomel, which is mercuric chloride, for purging both the stomach and the bowels, none of which sounds pleasant. Before concluding his services, Dr. Todd would instruct Lucy Stevenson and the household servants on how to provide care and leave notes concerning what foods, drinks, and medicines need to be given, along with when and how they are to be administered. As a family friend, Dr. Todd may have stayed and spent some time with the Colonel before departing. Tobacco was used by nearly all men in this era, and even by some less than reputable women. It was even prescribed medicinally as a stimulant. When Dr. Todd left that evening, there is no way he could have known that the Colonel's illness would be any different than in previous years, or that it would soon claim his life. Colonel Benjamin Stevenson passed away on October 10, 1822.